Have you ever felt stressed and anxious when preparing for a tech interview or just overwhelmed by the lack of resources available? Because trust me, I've been there, done that. Googling desperately for SQL interview questions and answers, struggling to find a coding platform where I could actually trial and error my SQL code, or even just being able to simulate a real interview experience. Well, fear no longer because I am so excited to introduce to you a new feature called AI Interviewer from Interview Query, a longtime partner and supporter of my channel. AI Interviewer is basically your coding simulator and mock interviewer all in one place. They offer a wide range of real SQL and Python interview questions asked at some of the largest tech companies, providing you with both a coding simulator as well as instant feedback or customized to your particular skill set. Let's now dive in together and see how this platform can help you build your confidence at ASO interview prep and land that next tech job. We're going to be going through a hard SQL interview question and seeing how this interviewer scores me. Let's get straight into it. All right, so we're now within the interview query platform. And as you can see, the AI interviewer is a new tab at the top. You can easily kick off an interview here by selecting difficulty level, as well as either Python or SQL. Instead of just going through this process, I'm just going to go through a specific SQL question that I haven't done before on this channel. And let me just pull that up right now. All right, so we're within a specific hard SQL question called fraudulent upvotes. And I'm going to hit this button here saying practice with the AI interviewer. Hi, I am the AI interviewer. Oh, here's the question. By reading the question out to creating you. Multiple accounts to upvote your own comments in a digital community. You need to determine the metric to identify such behavior. And oh, wow, this is an entire interview process. And it's actually capturing my audio right now as we are talking. I always explore my tables first. So let me just select all from users here. And usually I can limit five just so I'm not pulling in everything. And I want to just have a snippet of what this table is like. Let's go through users, which has contains user ID, name, sex, address. So a bunch of details about the user with their birthday, when they created their account. Um, let's also go through the comments table, which has, I guess, we've got the user ID that made the comment, the timestamp the comment was created, as well as the, I guess, the actual comment itself attached to a specific post. That makes sense. And then lastly, we've probably got comment votes, which has, I'm gonna assume this is the voting ID. We've got comment ID and user ID. So this must be the user ID that is upvoting a specific comment at a specific time. We need to figure out if bad actors or fraudulent actors are creating multiple accounts in order to upvote their own comments. So the first part of this question is more of an open-ended, I guess, business question. And we have to figure out what kind of metrics could we use to figure this out. I would focus on any users who have, I guess, only upvoted one specific user or the highest proportion of a single user. Some other ideas that I would use would be, you know, make a fake account immediately after they leave a comment. Then you could look at some timestamps there. Maybe fake accounts would have fake ages inputted or fake postcodes. That could be a possibility. All right, so now let's move on to the second part of this query, which is the actual coding. And I'm sure that's what most of you are here for. I will try my best to talk through my thought process. Um, so we've got to write a query that can display the percentage of users who are act acting fraudulently. A fraudulent user will likely only upload one other user, or they will spend the majority of their votes uploading one user, which is just the real self. The real self. I like to draw out my tables, visualize them, and know exactly what I'm working with. And leaving these comments really helps my thought process. Let's go select something. I'll leave this blank for now. Select something from comment votes table. Let's call this table CV for comment votes. Um, and then we're going to let join onto comments. I'll call this table C. I like to just name my tables with something shorter. Um, and then I like to indent my joins, as you probably all know if you've watched any of my other coding videos. Um, I'm going to left join on C dot, let's just check the comments table, C dot ID equals CV dot comment ID. So generally, if, generally, if the ID isn't specified, it's normally just whatever the table name is. So in terms of this table, comments ID would be comment ID. This would give me everything that I want, but if you look at the actual output that they want, you also need to get their name. So I guess in our case, I might also just join on the users table and then might as well just extract their name for now. So I'll go u.id equals comments user.id. So let's go c dot user id. 
sorry, this is the voter, so we should go to cb.userid. And then I only want to extract cases where it is a upvote. So let's go where is underscore upvote. Um, things one. And what do I want to get from this table? I want to get for every single user how many times they upvoted a comment. So let's select from the voting table, so cb.userid. I want to get how many times they upvoted a comment. So we're going to go count star to get how many, I guess, how many votes they made. And then I'll name this as number of votes. And we've all, obviously we've got a group by, I again like to just use group by one. I know it's not the best coding convention, but it is definitely a lot quicker than typing out cb.user underscore id. And while we're at it, because we had already left to onto the users table, we might as well extract users.name, so u.name. I'll name it what they want. I'll name it as voter. And then I'll name this one as the voter ID because that kind of makes sense. So I'm going to test this first. I'm also a big advocate of just testing your code as you go, just to make sure it's doing what you want it to do. And you don't, and I guess you can pick up a mistake early on. Might as well group by one and two, even though it should give me the same thing. And I'm going to hit this and see what I get. I really hope the interviewer does not say anything right now because I am just in my thought process. It's giving me feedback as I'm going, which I actually really appreciate because it's kind of pushing you onto the right track. So it's saying my query looks good and consider if I can identify if these are for a single user. Think about how you can join the tables to get the commenter information. Oh, we can also get the commenter information into the same query. Yes, we can. Because we can get c.userid, which is the commenter. So c.userid, which is user ID that made the comment. Oh, this is very handy, actually. I like this feedback loop. Um, take back what I said about it earlier. So c.user ID would be the commenter ID. And then we also want to get the commenter name, which we would probably have to left join on another user's table, just so we're joining on commenter user ID this time. So, so see how I'm going to name this table U2. And I'm going to call this U2. And then I'm going to call this U2.name as commenter. Oh, this is great. While we're at it for consistency, I'm going to name the first table U1. And then U2, I guess, would make a lot of sense. And I believe that this should then give me all the commenter names as well. So I'm going to group this by one, two, three, four. Although I believe grouping by one and three should also just work. But let's go with this and I'm going to give it a run. So we've got the voter ID, the voter, the commenter ID and the commenter and the number of votes, which is just what we want actually. So now that we have, I guess, this combination, we then have to figure out, I guess, how many votes they made in total and then what proportion is for a specific comment. I'm going to turn this table into a CTE. So with upvotes as, I also like to indent things. I'm a bit pedantic when it comes to indenting. Let's then create a second table, which I almost want to calculate how many upvotes every single user did or every voter did. I'm going to be selecting the voter ID. I'm going to sum up how many votes they made in total, which would be some number of votes. And I'm just going to call this as total upvotes or something. Total votes, sorry. Actually, I'm going to name this back to number of upvotes because I think that's exactly what we're checking because we're doing where upvote is one. And then let's go number of upvotes. From upvotes. And then let's group by one. Okay, so this has now given me for every single voter ID, how many total votes they have made. So now I think we're up to the last part of this query. It's just to see which ones have the highest proportions towards a single commenter. Let's submit this to AI and see what it gives us. Here goes nothing. I'm waiting on AI to talk to me. You are making good progress by creating a CTE to gather mm. the necessary data. Now, you need to calculate the percentage of upvotes each voter has given to a single commenter. Good. Consider how you can use the data from your CTE to calculate this percentage and identify fraudulent users. Okay, I actually really like that feedback. Um, so I guess I'm going to turn this select statement into another CTE. Let's do the same thing. And 
indented across. I'm a bit pedantic with this, I know. I guess we just need one more query to do some more, I guess, some kind of percentage field calculation. So I'm going to select the votes per user, which let's call B. And then we're going to left join onto upvotes, which I'll call UV. And it'll be on uv.voterid equals v dot voter id okay and we're gonna have to do some kind of i guess percentage calculation so let's take from uv let's take voter id i guess voter uv.commenter commenter id and then uv.commenter and then we need to merge on this table which is going to be this number here so we have to do some kind of calculation division of uv dot so number of upvotes upvotes from uv divided by the total votes from b my goodness these v's and uv's are really confusing me so i'm going to name this as percentage order by this thing descending so this is giving me just what i want for voter id and for percentages very good your query is well structured and logically sound congratulations on completing the query could you please provide a brief explanation of your solution if you have any follow-up questions feel free to ask oh wow that was actually much faster than i thought um i'm probably gonna just clean up this query a little bit i'm gonna round it to two decimal places rather than outputting everything maybe we'll just do where percentage is greater than or equal to 0.5 and that way we're only flagging the top three users as fraudulent so if i give this a run we're going to assume the output should only be the top three users why is it erroring unknown okay i guess we've got to do where i think the interviewer However, talks a bit too much sometimes sure the... all right great so I guess we've officially wrapped up this interview question and out of their 100 users, I guess I've just marked three of them as fraudulent because majority of their votes were dedicated towards a single user. For all of you watching now, I've joined together the comment votes table along with the comments table and users table to almost just votes at the comment level. And then I aggregated this together for votes at the user level and then did a high level division and just took the ones with the highest percentage. I would probably still then go ahead and do some spot checks. In a business context, people wouldn't tell you your work is done correctly. You almost have to make that decision yourself. Let's just test out user ID equals 12. Okay, there we go. So user ID 12, this person actually gave three upvotes. And then we need to just double check. User ID 12 must have upvoted three different comments. And then let's select all from comments where ID is in 85, what else is it? 85, 302, and then 756. And let's just, let me comment this one out because I felt like it's affecting my query and it's not running. All right, so let's run this last query and we're really hoping for two of the same users. Yes, there we go. So out of the three comments, two of them were both for user ID 42. All right, so I think this kind of tests the integrity of our code because in real life, we really don't have an interview to tell us if our code is doing the right thing. But I feel like this is it. I'm quite happy with my solution, so I'm just gonna wrap up now. Yeah, that is all that I have for this. And I will see you after I stop sharing my screen. Hope that you enjoyed going through this SQL interview question with me and seeing how I would approach this question. As always, if you wanted to improve your confidence and your technical skills, make sure to check out interview query. I'll have a link in my description box below. I really do think it's such an invaluable resource. Thank you again to interview query for sponsoring today's video. And as always, take care, stay safe, and I will see you in my next one. Bye-bye.